Okay, so um, delighted to be here, and thanks for those uh, rabble-rousing words from Eamon earlier. So I'm going to talk to you, um, like me and my team, are, uh, the guys and girls, we get pulled into many companies, and um, you know, when we talk about productivity and getting things better, really comes down to how well we identify and solve our problems. So this very quick talk, and again, I'm putting out the rashers here because I'm going to be trying something new. I haven't tried it with such a large group of people, so I, I look for your patience. If it works, it works. Fantastic. If it doesn't, I'm sure we try. Have a bit of fun. So there's two things that keep coming up again and again when we look at problem solving in organizations. So I'm going to talk to you about two of those things. So. Um, as mentioned, like, there's a lot of talk about Shingo and enterprise excellence now. In, in, and again, Ireland is absolutely leading the, the posse there. Um, I've been at the Shingo conferences over and over again, and all the time we're at this statement that Ireland is number one in the world. So it's a fantastic place to be, and it makes me very proud. So we're hardwired to think about systems. So our business is made up in systems. If we say something is really, really important to our business, well then what's the system behind it to make it happen? And when we talk about how we improve our system of improvement, that system of improvement talks about how we improve, not only make things better, but when we look at these other systems that we have in the business, how do we improve those systems? How do we identify problems in those systems and how do we make them better? So, when we look at this first bit is how do we understand systems in, in the business? So we have a bit more time, so I'm going to ask, I was just going to put this up, but let's play this game. So hands in the air, I suppose. How many in the room have what we call a standard problem solving approach in their business? Okay, lots of hands. Okay. How many of you have a visual management system in your business? So we have these boards, okay? So if I came and visited your company, would I see good quality problem solving on those boards? Mm. Okay, right, All right. And what is it relevant to now? So I'd often go into companies and they say, oh, you have a problem there. I say, yeah, yeah, we have an A3 on that. So where's the A3? Oh, the engineers have it. It's not relevant to now. So what's the system in the business? And then also, when we, if I go to the higher corridors, you know, I, I put on my oxygen mask and I go up to the top, top tier, and then I, I walk around the offices of leadership, do I see the same systems and practices there as I see in the shop floor? So how many have the same system and practices? Okay, a few, good. But it really, it's all about this bit at the end, about how, how am I as a leader coaching for this thing that's really important in our organization, which we've called how we fix our problems. So the num number one challenge is this idea of what is the system in our business for solving problems, and also how do we make the system relevant to where we are in our journey, okay? So if I'm in the muck and bullets down here, and there's a lot of reactivity, and I can't really predict with confidence, well then I need a particular type of problem solving and I need to have a particular type of head on me when I come in and look for problems. When things are a bit more stable and standardized, again, I have a different sort of head on me there. And when I'm looking for real opportunities, what's, what's possible or what's the potential, I have a different head on me again. So over here, I'm always looking for what's the standard. I'm always looking for new ways for the process to speak to me so I understand it better. So if I'm going and applying the same thinking to solve the problems we had, using the same measures, the same way I look at the process, well, you're just going to be constantly in this loop. Here I'm looking for new voices of the process that give me better understanding of what's going on so I can write better standards. And I also need to behave as a leader different ways when I approach my problem solving, in, in, depending on where I am. So this could be a whole company, or it could be just an, a, a department in a company, okay? So what is the system to enable me to solve problems at the lowest level, right down at the top level? And how do I know, you know, what sort of head do I have, need to have on me when I'm solving those problems? So that's issue number one, where's the system? So again, the tendency is we focus on the tool, like one thing that does my head in. Uh, have you got a problem-solving system? Yeah, yeah, we did 457 
I was at 59 A3s last year. Great. But is anything getting fixed? Are we fixing the right stuff? Are we moving the bottom line? Are they the right things? Or are, is it just another, you know, lean creates, it, creates its own waste by creating these systems where we have to do things? But like, what's it actually doing in the business? And what culture is it enabling us to make us better, solve our problems, build skill and capability within the people we have in the organization, and move us along the journey? Okay. So we don't think in terms of system, and we don't we don't focus on the type of behaviours um, we need to encourage this. Now, my hero is in the room today, which is Kevin Eyre, Kevin Eyre, and he's going to talk to you a lot about this stuff about behaviours and how we talk to people about enabling this sort of this journey to happen. So that's issue number one. Does that hit a hit a bell with anybody? Yeah, sort of. A few nodding heads. Okay, so this will wake you up. So. The other issue is process focus. So can my magic people put out the props? That means you, Kevin, as well. Okay, so we're gonna be doing stuff just to put out some sheets of paper beside your... So this, I do this a lot with companies. This, this thing I'm gonna show you. And this is a gem. So, in your organizations, this is something I absolutely recommend you bring home and try in your own, your own, your own home, okay? So we're going to pull three willing volunteers or unwilling volunteers from each of the tables. So we're, we have some victims you can choose amongst yourselves. Yeah, don't get all up, up at once, it's okay. So normally when I do this, I set out four flip chart sheets on the floor. Okay, so this is about process focus. And then I have lined these people up. These are people who will be releasing cards. So these people are going to release a card in a particular way, which I'll show you. And it's going to fall down onto the flip chart sheet. Okay, so normally we do it four, but today we're just going to do it with two. Okay, so we'll have two droppers, card dropper technicians. And we have one card picker-upper technician, okay? So when, when this person drops a card in the standard way I'm going to show you, because we're all about standards, if the card lands fully on the A4 sheet, A, sorry, the flip chart sheet, this person can pick up that card, pass it to this person, who then does the same technique and drops it onto that card. Now the table's job is to count how many cards have been dropped and what's the roll throughput yield. So what's the, what, what yield are we getting through this process, okay? Got it? Got the idea? Sort of? So two people are going to be dropping cards in the particular way I'm going to show you. One person is going to be picking up cards that have fallen fully on the sheet. That's not fully on the sheet. Nor is it lands on this one and then bounces onto this one. That's not good either. Fully on the sheet. Card picker upper picks up the card, gives it to the second person who then drops it on the card. Got the idea? Okay. I see sheets appearing, which is good. We need them. Thank you, Fiona. Wonderful. Okay. So, there are rules. There are always rules. So, the card dropping pe people, card releasing technicians, excuse me, card releasing technicians. We'll stand about a foot away from the edge of the paper, long ways, and they'll hold the card like such, pinching, pinching grip, top of the card. Very important, pinching grip. Mackenzie did a lot of work and research on this, so we have to follow the standard work. Okay, so pinch the top of the card, drop the card. So finger and thumb drip, one card dropped at a time. No smart Alex. One card dropped at a time. And if I've done with, with this with anybody in the audience before, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> and just watch. Okay, watch. You all think you're being set up now. But anyway. So only cards, and we've talked about that. Okay, so the card release technician, got that. Okay. So the customer is looking for the maximum yield through the process. So think of this as a drying process. Something is falling, it needs to fall a certain time, a certain distance, and a certain temperature. It needs to go through process one, needs to go to the next process and do the same thing, and now it's ready to give to the customer. 
So the customer is looking for the maximum throughput yield from the process. And if we don't get that, we're in trouble and you don't win the prize. So maximum process gets the prize. So dropping technique, you have cards on your table. I should have pointed it out. Yeah, you have a pack of cards. If the cellophane isn't off the pack, open up the pack and get them ready to go. So you've all picked your victims, your, your volunteers. Yeah, okay. So why don't you just organize now, get your two people up. Those two need to be just a little further apart. So set up your people. Come on, I, I only have 20 minutes here for God's sake. Come on, get, get the finger. Just three people. Why are you only three people should be standing up? Okay. Okay. Okay, so. You, okay, boys and girls, just watch me for a second. What I want you to do, this is organized chaos, obviously. All right, shh, like the sea, shh. This is all very easy. There should only be three people standing up at each table, maybe, so we can all have enough air to breathe, because we're going to get very high up and be, we might use all the oxygen. Okay? Okay, so we're standing. The, shh, look, look, look. Shh, I know you're all very excited. This is the first time you had to stand up all morning. Car dropping technicians, put up your hands. Okay, so you need to be standing at the short end of the sheet. Uh, one foot away. Okay, got it. Okay, we're in position. Say yes, John, we're in position. Very good. Okay, card picker up or technicians? Is there, you seem to be, is there a, there's a lot of noise down the end of the room. Are you, are you in trouble? Okay, I, I'm going to explain it. Just, okay. All right, you ready? Shh, shh, shh. Watching. Anybody who have done this with before, you might help out the learners. Okay, so card dropping technician, card releasing technicians. Shouldn't be saying that. Card picking up technicians. Rules. Perpendicular, standard work, pinch grip, drop card. That's not perpendicular. Hey, hey, hey. That's the, no, that's cheating. Okay. Full height. We don't, we're not looking for umpa lumpas here. Like full height. Okay. Okay. Right. Here we go. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Are we clear on the rules? Okay. So I'm going to give you two minutes at this because I don't have a lot of time. Actually, only two minutes left. God. Um, so two minutes and let's have a go. Two, okay. Start dropping cards. Get them through the process quickly. On the sheet. To, no, no, that's not on the sheet. Keep dropping. Come on, speed. Okay, speed, drop the cards. Come on, drop them, drop them, drop them. Drop the cards. That's, yeah, that's not standard work over in the right-hand corner there. Out from your shoulder. Perpendicular. Okay. Okay, I, I'm tight on time, so I think you got the, got the idea. Okay, whoa, stop. Okay, shh. okay stop, 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 stop. Okay, how many cards has anybody got through the process so far? Zero. Zero. Okay, that was easy. Eight. Eight. How many did you drop? Fifty-two. Okay. Are you proud of yourselves? Okay. So there's a problem here, okay? So you can sit back. Thank you very much. Okay. So again, I really encourage you to try this when you go home. You'll have more time. You can practice it. And it's really, really powerful piece of learning when we talk about understanding process and problem solving. So you've tried to do something and it, okay. You've tried to do something and it obviously hasn't worked. Okay, right. So people say, ah, oh, no, that doesn't happen in the real world. But I walk into companies and they show me processes that are working at like 10% efficiency. You know, and we've got it up to 25% efficiency. What we do, you know, what we do. So, how do we now think about? Uh, our, so we'd we'd start doing some problem solving. So again, if we had more time, I'd get you to define the problem here. Okay. So I'm going to skip this along a bit. So what does the important thing about? Who does it involve? Where does it impact? 
and when does it incur? So if we just were defining the problem around that, why would it be important for us to understand that what the problem is here? So who has the problem in the room? Is it just one table or is it all the tables? Okay, all the tables. Is it one operator or is it all the, sorry, technicians or colleagues, whatever word we want to use? It's all, everybody. So what does that tell us about how we solve the problem? It doesn't matter who's doing it or where it happens, the problem is the same. So that tells us where to start looking about how we solve the problem. Okay, process focus. So when I do this, I get all of these reasons. These are solutions people come up with. Oh, um, can we get shorter people? Let's hire the Oompa Loompas and get them in doing it. No, because it has to fall right height. Um, can I weigh the cards? No, we can't weigh the cards. Okay. Um, can I make a tube so that when I drop the cards through the tube, oh, that's a good idea, but the cards tend to stick on the tube and it's, then we have the standards and cleaning the tube and all this, so no, it doesn't work. Can we make the target space smaller? No. Or bigger, sorry, bigger, excuse me, bigger. You'll make it smaller later. So can I make it bigger? Yeah. And then people say, oh, it's all the air in the room is influencing the path of the car. Okay, great, shut off all the air conditioning. Block all the doors, have a go. It doesn't make any difference. So we're looking at process focus and what's happening in the card. So we need a better result. And actually, this thing, can, you can get these cards to land consistently on an A4 sheet of paper. Actually, I know a person who I've done this with, and they can actually restack the cards. They're so good at it, they can restack the pack of cards on the floor, which is pretty cool. I can't do it, but I can certainly get it to land on an A4 sheet of paper. So, same condition, same height, same target area. So what's the process? What's happening to the card? What's happening to the card? Is it falling? Hmm? It's too flat. I, had, I meant to have a prop here. So, Falling, okay, so the card is falling. That's why I kept, kept tripping myself up on dropping as opposed to, you know, releasing. Okay, so this pen has fallen. Is this card falling? What's it doing? Floating, okay, like that. What, what's floating mean? Drifting off. So it's kind of flying, isn't it? So what's important when things fly? Direction. Okay. If I take a wing off a plane and I take it up to 35,000 feet and I rip it off the side of the plane and I drop it, is it going to fly? So what makes a plane wing fly? Aerodynamics. Aerodynamics, okay. So when an airplane's wing is flying, it's, it's all about aerodynamics. So I could look at this as a simple process, I'm just dropping the card. But actually there's a lot of shit going on there. And actually a couple of guys here have, have written a paper about it. Okay. So what would I do to change the aerodynamics of how the card is dropped? Shape. shape. Change the shape of the card? Yeah, that's another one I should have put on a list. No, can't do that. Can't fold in half, can't twist it, can't do it. It's just flat. That's how we want the cards to be processed. So what do I need to do? Again, go home, play with this at home, have your groups. But what's amazing is I just need to make one change. How I release the card. Okay? So I understand now, I do a bit of research. I, actually, this is very different. Okay, that's really different. And you show this to people, and these are all actually falling on a, on a size. Do you, can you confirm that? A4 sheet of paper? Thank you very much. Okay, so, and you show this to people, and they say, oh my God, if I could just fix that problem, this world would be completely different. So how do I understand and play with my processes and understand what's actually going on here? It's not just sticking two bits of tubing together. There's a lot of shit going on here. What do we know about it? 
it's not just ringing somebody up and saying, I need a truck at my loading bay. This, what's actually going on here? And how do I understand what's important to the process? Because if I understand what's important to the process, I can then write some really good bits of standard work documents. Because I can see people write, spend a lot of time and a lot of money writing procedures for processes they don't understand. So how can we create standard work? Because, you know, and again, who's the person who knows most about the process? The person doing it. So maybe the person doing it, for some reason, they were arsed around the cards and they found, geez, that, that, that's completely different. Why don't I just do that? And then, oh no, I can't do that because it's all da 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 da. But like, how do we release that learning and create that learning environment where people do that? Okay. So, in my book, we really start to think about this idea of experimentation and play. No ma matter what we're doing, no matter how regulated or controlled it needs to be, we need space to let people play and investigate about what's happening in their process. What could we be doing? Okay. So, and this is where we learn. So all this stuff about aerodynamics. So you can imagine somebody going home and say, geez, you know what? I've learned a lot about aerodynamics today. It's not just about dropping a card. You know, imagine this. You can earn a lot of money in a pub, actually. Consultant's life can be tough. So sometimes you have to go and earn your, your bob doing tricks in a pub. But it's not a trick. It's a real learning experience. And that's what problem solving should be enabling us to do. We don't train problem solving skills. We learn. We create experiences. We enable people to learn. We get geeky about our processes. We make sensible understanding about wh how, what we need to control. And then we document that process. And when some genius comes up with a better way of doing it, well, then we, we do it better. So really, what we're trying to do is we have this innate human inquisitiveness that gets battered out of us as we go through our lives. But it's still there. So our job as leaders is to create this environment where true problem solving and true organizational learning can really happen. And it comes down to silly little things like, how do we play with our process? What do we know? How are we giving people time to do that? How do we make it safe? So if somebody discovers something new, maybe by accident, and they, come, they don't get their head kicked in for doing something that's not standard, maybe there's learning in it. So how good are we now at creating that environment where we can have real good problem solving? So thanks for your attention. Play the game at home. Have fun. It's a good one, and there's a lot of learning in it. Okay? Thank you very much. You can keep the cards.